Welcome listeners, AIA Digital Marketing Podcast. How are you today? You've got your favourite trio here. You've got Wade and you've got Joe and you've got Billy. How are you guys? Good. Hey, San. How you going? Good. good. I'm good, thank you. What's happening in your world, Billy? Well. Lots, Joe. Lots and lots. I wouldn't even know where to start um, uh, gearing up for Christmas. Ooh. You know, as most people I think are. When I say gearing up for Christmas, I mean postponing buying any presents until the last minute. Yep. I'm one of the guys you see rushing into... Um, I'm one of the guys you see rushing into um, Big W at like you the know, servo at 11:30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you man. can have a meat pie and Women's Weekly. It's been done. <laughs> Let's see. So we're covering Happy Christmas, babe. <laughs> We're covering sales today, but before we do, real quick, let's just go around the room. What's the worst Christmas present you think you've ever bought or been given? Um, I remember, I think I was like 12 and my grandmother bought me like this mini boxing bag with boxing gloves and oh. it was the, the punching bag was filled with lint and I just nearly pissed myself laughing for about an hour. I got a bag <laughs> of lint for Christmas. Tight. Yeah, it's pretty good. What about you, Joe? Uh, I once got a, a dressing gown that was... 14 sizes too small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I hope you still got was that. It, did, was there some subliminal yeah. messaging in that? or uh, it, it, why, it, why is that picture not on Instagram? It was full, a, like full-length like dressing gown, but it came to like my elbow. Yeah. What, like short sleeve? <laughs> yeah, not on purpose. Oh, that's brilliant. I uh, had to get a present on the way to a guy's house. Uh, that it, We were celebrating Christmas, invited me over for lunch, and uh, I, I just had nothing but could not go with nothing. So I stopped at a servo and got um, some notepads and pens. <laughs> <laughs> so you can remember. Hey, you, yeah. Make sure you write down a list for Christmas yeah. next year, baby. Yeah, that's right. Some Bic pens <laughs> and notepads. Hey, Bic's the go. I don't oh, want a Bic pen. I, I just remember kind of like, I think it would have been better if I'd not actually bought anything. But anyway, back to sales, guys. So in this episode, we will be covering, uh, we're a little bit more organized this time, which is, this is great. Um, how to increase your sales. We're going to be, it's a bit of a crammer, We're cramming a bit in. Prospecting, the intro, targeted questions, qualifying, body language, speaking techniques, good storytelling, closing, negotiation, objection handling, and some handy sales tools that people can use um, to help them in their day-to-day um, sales existence. Lives. That's right, day-to-day existence. Well, yeah, sales isn't just about selling, is it? You can use these techniques <coughs> in your interactions with people. Persuasion, man. Sales is persuasion, mm. right? So, yeah, I agree with you, Wade. You can. You can use it in your interactions with everyday people. Um, and what I love about sales is also it's, the, it's almost the only job in which there is no immediate cap on your potential income. If you want to, if you want to stay stay up all night, you know, writing down a list of prospects, people you've spoken to before, um, researching your product so that you can you can do a better job of of um, adding value in these sales meetings. Uh, decide to call three times as many people today as you called the day before. Mm. You know, it's going to have an immediate effect on your on your income, right? If you're being paid commission, of course. We hope so. Yeah, yeah. So. There's almost almost no cap on um, how much salespeople can earn, and often salespeople earn more than the CEOs and the managers and the, <coughs> um, you know, the, the the executives and the corporates in businesses. So, so you learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. They they do try to sometimes introduce things like commission caps, you know, and things like that. Um, but it, it is not unusual for salespeople to be earning more than than the business owners if they're good at what they do. Right, Joe? Yeah. So uh, uh, by the way, guys, Joe's. Been a sales guy here for a number of years now. He's our best sales guy. Um, and Thank you very much. Smashing it. So there'd be no way on earth you could do a podcast on sales without having Joe involved. Some months are better than others. Some months are better than others. That's it's part the, of the sales life, right? It's the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. It's the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. But it's also an interesting gig, isn't it? Because, you know, you can have a crack a month in regards to activity, you know, planting seeds and yes. things like that. And, and, and you know... Maybe if you'd gone on holidays a month before or dropped the ball or whatever, you just kind of weren't in the zone. You're going to kind of pay for that later. I, you know yeah, I mean? 100%. I like to talk about, you know, what you're getting today is based on what you've been doing for the last three months. Yeah, totally. Depending on, depending on your purchase cycle, right? Yep. If you've yep. got a, a relatively easy Bing, bang, boom. value yes. prop and it's something you can just pick up today, then yeah, three months. But if you've got a, a sales cycle that takes a year, yep. then realistically you need to be looking at what you've been, look at what you've been doing for the last two years. Yeah, man. To, to be making the sales you're making today. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So, um, 
Joe, tell us a bit about your experience with sales. What do, what do you enjoy about sales? What do you what do you like about sales? Is that is that possible? Can you do that? It's a bit off script, I know. Yeah, we sure. We made a plan, but why stick to it? <laughs> so, um, I mean, I've been um, essentially I've been in in sales in one form or another since I was like twenty. Um, started in a call center, inbound service based call center with you know upsell opportunities. Uh, been in Australia for ten years now. Started in digital marketing at that time. Um, very keen at that point to move into the online space and to look at digital media because it was a, even 10 years ago, right? Not a long time ago, but long enough that it was still a massive growth industry, growth opportunity. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, fairly on and off for, for 20 years, almost 15 years. Well, once, yep. once the sales are in your blood, that's it. Once, that's yeah, it. There's no on and off button. It's certainly evolved for me though over time where in the past it was, it was yeah, a job making money, trying to do what I could do and, you know, get some people over the line. There's a bit of an endorphin rush and it's, it's a nice feeling. But um, today it's, it's much more about, you, you know, you touched on it, adding value, about being able to help people and, and at times being able to say, this isn't going to work for you, right? Mm. It's, not a, it's not a great feeling for anybody, but if you've not got something that's going to work in, in some form of, in our case, advertising medium, mm. that's important, I think. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, being able to help people get under the skin of what it is that people want, their you, intrinsic motivations and helping them achieve that. Yeah, cool. Do you think that there was a time when you um, <clears throat> kind of evolved um, and started thinking more about adding value to the prospects that you were speaking to rather than maybe when you first started just all, all about getting more sales for you? You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, definitely. I think anybody who goes through the sales journey starts just, you know, it, it's a way to make money. You don't need a, a you know qualified educational background or anything, which I don't have. Um, but um, in the beginning, it's a bit of a it's it's a really big um, sales is a really big thing. Mm. I'm sure there's a better way of saying that. What a thing! What a thing! <laughs> but there's it, there's a lot of nuance that goes into it. It's like golf. <laughs> sure, it's a feel. Why not? Sales yeah. is a feel. Yeah, my short game, pretty good. Long yeah. game, rubbish. <laughs> well, you need to work on the long game, weren't you? Just saying, it's about what you did three months ago. That's right. Yeah, but it's it's. I guess what I meant by that was like it's like golf or chess, where you can always be getting better. Well, you you can know yeah. the moves in yeah. chess, right? You can know that your 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 horse. Yeah. Moves two up and a night. Yeah, That's, yeah. We, we're really intellectual horse. game players over here. Yeah, we know Your what a, we know what a horse in chess is. Right? <laughs> it's a bishop. <laughs> so you know the moves, but yeah. being able to actually extrapolate that and think ten moves ahead. Yes. You know, that takes time to practice. Yeah, man. Well, there's um, boundaries, there's rules in that game, yes. and there's also rules in sales. Absolutely. Is totally. that what we're touching on? Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 definitely swish. <laughs> But but having said that, so I, I guess um, you know, people that are like chess and golf, people that are really really good at sales, are just like light years away from people who are kind of intermediate or novices, right? Mm. You, you kind of there's there's such a wide range of um, skill sets in being able to be an effective salesperson, um, and no one really starts anywhere near that that high level of skills. Well, there's the gift of the gab, the natural talent. Some <coughs> people definitely have it. That, yeah, so there's yeah. there's probably temperaments that are more um, prone to being good at sales, you know, uh, for sure. Like uh, extroverts um, and also um, I, I personally think that um, uh, optimists, you know. Definitely uh, optimists. I think actually yeah. I think introverts probably have a better chance at making a – a good sales career. Yes. Because introverts will typically listen, sit back and listen more. Yes. And I think a massive part of sales is effective listening. Like oh, active man. listening. Not just, hmm, yes, hmm, hmm, okay. Mm. Mm. But actually absorbing and repurposing that information. Mm. Assessing what it is that people are telling you and being able to come to the table with some form of value. Yes. Well, that's what I was speaking about in terms of your day-to-day -day relationships. <laughs> Obviously, you know. A big part of sales is listening and finding yeah. out what that person wants or needs or desires. Yes. And that can only reinforce your friendships and relationships if you're genuine. Definitely. But I think it'd be harder for an introvert to get out there. You know what I mean? Like they'd, they'd be less prone to um, picking up. You know, everyone gets that pre-call anxiety. You know, I think that you get the, the pre-call anxiety bug that a lot of people can catch. Um, where they, they feel like they're nervous about picking up the phone and ringing someone. Mm. Mm. <coughs> I think that's you. Well, I mean, an introvert can probably, you know, thrive in a digital space or, you know, via 
messaging. I mean, a phone is a, a nice barrier for mm. those people who can't do the face-to-face. Mm. That intimacy, that physical space is intimidating. Mm. And I think that that's what holds a lot of people back mm. in anything. I think yeah, a, lot of totally. it's, a lot of it's practice as well. Um, I think a lot of the phone anxiety or the meeting anxiety can yep. come down to not knowing what you're talking about or wanting to say. Yeah, totally. Or the <laughs> questions you're asking. You know, if or it's a fear of rejection. Fear of, well, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and there's there's definitely an element of having a very thick skin in this game. Um, totally, I get I get shut down, you know, multiple <coughs> times a day, yes. and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not looking for for that person. I'm how, looking for the yes. How good for me? I, I personally, I think that um, my life changed. I changed drastically from my experience in making cold calls. Yeah, okay, I can my, see that. My levels of confidence, yep. Generally speaking, and um, my um, ability to articulate what I wanted to talk about to people in my day to day life. Um, and my fear of interacting with other human beings, mm. you know, that low level kind of anxiety I might have had, especially as a teenager. Um, I, I really do feel like sales helped me a lot. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, in the early days. When I'd, I'd say so too, yeah, yeah, working in retail, having like being in a space where you can't just sit around and, you know, wait yeah. for someone to come to you. Hide behind you've your shell. Yeah, you you've know? got to be active. And yeah. I think, you know, just having that initial contact in that scenario, yeah, totally. in that setting definitely helps you. You know, socially. Yeah. It's, it's exactly that. It's social interaction. Yeah. And it's a huge part of what sales is. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so confidence is a big thing, right? I think for sales as well. When you're nervous or you sound a bit desperate or something like that, people kind of go... No chance. You know. You're not going to make a yeah. sale. Yeah. If like, you don't believe it, they're yeah. not going to believe it. They can it. smell the desperation. Totally. Because it comes yeah. off. It comes off in your tone. It's it like dating. Yeah. You know, if you're too keen, it's not going to happen. That's right. Interestingly, hey. one of the first sales tips I ever heard was um, take it, like consider it like dating. Like, you yeah. know, what do you do with a girl at the bar? Oh, boy, what do you do with a girl at the bar? You don't talk about yourself. You talk about them. You ask some right. questions about them. Their favourite topic. Their favorite, everybody's <laughs> favourite topic. That's right, man. Absolutely. The pregnant pause is a good one for that too. Have you heard the, heard about the pregnant pause? Probably the best tip I was ever given when trying to um, meet my life partner. <laughs> talk to women when I was earlier, uh, when I was younger. <laughs> when so I was earlier. When I, earlier on when I was younger, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> It works a treat, but I, instead of having a preset script and walking up to a girl and saying, hi, my name's Billy, what's your star sign or something, you know, like mm. crap, I just started, I'd just go, hi, my name's Billy and just stare at them and just wait and it works, works a treat. It makes you look genuine. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely creepy. <laughs> Which you want to look when talking to a woman. Is your face. <laughs> hi, my name's Billy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying not to burst. All right, so um, we better ju- dive into this, guys. There's a lot to cover, right? Um, first things first, prospecting. The all dreaded prospecting. Mm-hmm. That's something that people hate doing. Mm. Um, Why? You know, <clears throat> well, it's it's where you, you meet the most rejection. It's where you feel like you have to annoy people when they don't want to be annoyed. You feel like you're kind of interrupting people's day. Um. So, you know, prospecting can be hard. It's like sifting for gold. You know, mm. if you're panning for gold, uh, you, you go through maybe 100 pans before you get one tiny little... So that's like a million grains of dirt for one tiny little nugget of gold, right? Mm. And, th- and that, that's exactly the same as prospecting for leads. Um, you know, um, cold calling, it was, you know, um, just a matter of digging for gold. And you can't turn dirt into gold, right? So very early on, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to get their call stats up or keep people on the phone. Yeah. Right, and um, that's something that that can waste everyone's time um, and lead to a, a harsher rejection because you feel like you might be sw- swindling. Well, you've and, invested you know, time. That's right. Yeah. How do you identify, you know, when prospecting, <coughs> what's gold and what's not? Oh uh, man, just basic um, intuition, in my opinion. You know, wouldn't you say, Joe? Have you done much prospecting? Yeah, man. I um, um, my first role in Australia was. Uh, was uh, working with a business that uh, was celebrating people for, you know, having 50K books sort yes. of thing. Um, and when I came in, the, the job was to go and, and get a list and cold call. Yeah, right. Get in front of business owners, typically yep. in Sydney. It was a travelling gig, so I'd go out and meet them in person. Yep. Door um, to door. Phone to phone. Oh. You get on the phone, you'd introduce yourself, you talk about, you know, is this something you're looking for at the moment? Set an appointment. Set an appointment, go out and meet with them. Yeah. And then account manage that that person. Cool. Um. 
Yeah, and I say, you know, it's even 10 years ago when this was a growth industry and people were being celebrated for 50K books. Mm. In that business, over two years, I grew I grew to 120K books. So, wow. And that wasn't a, a huge success story in that in that business yes. uh, at that time. But um, yeah, certainly it was it was showing that that growth potential of, uh, of digital marketing at that point. Yep. Um, so top tip for cold calling. Mm. Top tip for me is to do two things in your opening sentence. Mm-hmm. Is to um, reverse engineer the no. Mm-hmm. So people are looking to, when somebody picks up the phone from an unknown phone number, they're thinking, I don't know who this is. I probably don't want to talk to them. Um, I want to say no, right? It's your first thing you're looking for is to say, no, I'm not interested. No, I don't want to do this. Mm. So right out the gate, uh, reverse engineer the no. Mm. And that typically for me is the question, is this a bad time? Mm. And if it is, cool. When when is a good time? When can we set this up? Yes. Um, the other thing to do is <coughs> respect so, people's time, right? Mm, yep. So if you're introducing yourself, people don't know who you are. They don't know what you want. Um, you're a biz- busy business owner. You're doing the work of five men at any one time. Yep. Um, just get on that call and just say, look, I know I'm calling you out of the blue a little bit, but I just want to tell you what I'm about. 15 seconds. You've got 15 or 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You've got a minute yep. to talk. Can we just have a quick rundown? And if you're it's a something decent you're guy. In- I'm a decent guy. You're a decent person. We're both decent people. We're, you got a minute? We're Everyone's cool. got a minute. We're a cool guy. We're, we're a cool guy. It's just <laughs> yeah. no worries. One minute. One minute of time. And if it's something you're interested in, then we can set up a time to talk later. Uh, or now if you're free. Or if it's not, all good. I'll move on. I'll take you off my list. Yes. No one will ever call you again. I'm respecting <laughs> your time. Yeah, yeah. I'm a reasonable guy. <laughs> Maybe it's something you're interested in. Maybe it's not. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's just, give me, just give me a minute. Let's talk. Totally. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but... Um, you know, um, uh, people that were just, are just fresh and have never done cold calling before that, but want to get into it. I've seen that kind of um, beginner's luck, you might call it, where people get hired into a call centre and they make their first 10 cold calls ever. Yes. And they smash it, <laughs> right? And then they just consistently get worse over time, um, you know, and, and I've thought about that and I've kind of identified, I think that that, that not nervousness, nervousness is never helpful, but just that genuine, um, you know, uh, integrity that people have in that f- those first couple of cold calls that they make <clears throat> where they're like, they don't have a preset script. They've run over 10 million times in their head, you know, that the guy or the girl on the other end of the phone just goes, oh, here we go. They've just gone bang, salesperson. They put them in that category, yep. in that pigeonhole, and they turn off their brain. They're not even listening anymore, right? They're just waiting for you to stop talking for long enough for them to say, no thanks, not interested, see you later. But how many times do you pick up the phone? Again, unknown number. Yeah. And somebody gets on the phone and says, oh, the reason for my call is that I'm going to talk about this and then I want to talk about this and I want to see if it's something that's available for you. Yeah. And I want to do it. And, and, and we're really good at this and this is who too we are as a history. Right. It's, 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 no, it's also too much of my time you're about to take up, right? Like It, it could be a two or three minute pitch. Yeah. Like you say, you're, you're literally just waiting. two minutes and you haven't even started your pitch and I'm already pissed off. You don't you know, even know if, I, if, if I'm a even remotely close to a relevant prospect. Right. You don't know if I'm the right person to talk to. Yep. You don't know if I've not just engaged an agency for exactly what you're doing. Yep. You don't you don't you've no idea about me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so 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 I think that I think that um um being respectful of people's time and you can do that with tonality as well. I've noticed people that do really well at cold calling um often speak really quickly. Especially right at the start. Mm. And I think that that's like a sign of um politeness. Where you're saying, look, I know you don't have much time. I'm going to respect your time, and so I'm going to I'm going to um, quickly introduce myself um, and start asking you questions to see if we're wasting each other's time or not right now. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, a couple of quick tips from me for prospecting. I think is um, you can't turn dirt into gold. You know, um, just if if it's not if it's not there, hang up and move on to the next one. Right? Yeah. Um, and another one is the tonality. I think is it kind of a touching on another point, but the intro, you've got literally like four seconds for them to make up their mind about you, right? Um, and the way that you can, the way, one way that you can stop <coughs> people's um, sort of um, pre, preset um, in a dialogue when they get a sales call, you know, like you've stopped listening and you're thinking, when is this guy or girl going to stop talking for long enough for me to say I've got to go? Your brain's going, but I've got, man, I've got to get back to what I was doing. I was just about to make that call or... I'm walking into a shop and you think, this is so annoying. When's this guy going to go? Another sales call. Why are they calling me? This is what you're thinking. You're not listening, right? <clears throat> There's one way that you can break through that every time without fail. And that's the, uh, that's the inflected pitch, right? What are you smiling about? 
What are you doing with that camera, Wade? <laughs> I haven't moved. Why are you guys grinning? I can't uh, see the screen. No, hang on. Inflected, like inflected pitch. All right. Inflected pitch. Right. So um, <laughs> don't be distracted. That's no rule smiling. number one of sales. Wade's, yeah. Wade's Keep memeing. your eye on the prize. Wade's memeing on the. Uh, oh, is he? <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Um, I'm keeping us relevant in the digital space. Nice. So the inflected pitch is this thing that um, uh, it goes way back to how we're wired as human beings, right, and how we interact socially. It's right in there. It's right in the core of our kind of um, thinking where if you just go up at the end of what you're saying as if it's a question, yes, even though it's not a question, uh-huh. it stops that inner dialogue and they feel like they have to quickly jump in and answer something even though it might not actually be a question. So it's... Unbelievably powerful. If you're doing it just there, you're pulling me in to... to yeah, you just said yes, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. right then, mm. right? You got back into the conversation, right? Even if, if you weren't listening, you're going to be back in now. I want to I say yeah, but now it, I'm conscious of it. It yeah, is yeah. so powerful, man. <laughs> it is so powerful. It's so easily underestimated, the power of that. Just that little thing that you do, right? And the more natural you can get at it, the more natural you can make it sound, the more easily you can do it, um, the more powerful it is. You can get anyone's attention with that. Stop it. <laughs> with that? Yeah. But that's the thing. You've got to remember, if you do it naturally, you've got to go down first and then up. What with I found that, that it does as well, if, if your prospect is starting to wane or their attention isn't there, the mm. question tone mm. makes them replay the last three or four seconds yes. in their mind. That's right. Yeah, man. Totally. Yeah, they, they have to think, what, what am I meant to be answering right, now, right yes. now? What's the right... You know, their brain's naturally a problem solver and it's kind of like subliminal. You're not even... Oh, that sounded like a question. I'm going to think about what the right answer is. No, you don't think that. Your brain scrambles to find, you know, before you even have a chance to stop it, to find the answer to this question. So it's it's so powerful, man. Mm. Cool. Okay, so that's a little bit about prospecting. Um, anything else we want to add? No. So prospecting. Move on to where do you where do you find your prospects? Man, there are so many places. They're the marketplace. <laughs> I've told you about the sales guy that used to work here. And I said, um, what are you going to sell today, mate? And he goes, your products and services. <laughs> and I said, who to? He goes, the marketplace. What did he say, the meerkat or something? <laughs> He's, yeah. He, uh, he, um, he, was, he, was, he was great. So, so, you know, there are a lot of places. There's online directories. There's, um, you know, is, would probably be the first thing. That's where most people go, I think, to get their, their – um, well, over the years anyway. Oh, man, this age of digital – I was going to say digital yeah. advertising again. But no, in this, in this digital age, mm. you know, LinkedIn is your friend, man. Mm. People's information is so valuable. And there's, yes. there's also, there's directories where you can get um, decision makers' direct contact information. Yes. Uh, I can't think of one right now, but I use a few of them. But, yes. Uh, I'm blanking on them. But um, yeah, you can, yeah, get direct access to, to people. Yeah. And if anybody's ever got a complaint, another top tip, anybody's ever got a complaint about how did you get my number? Yes. The internet. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Blame the internet for everything. <laughs> So, there's also, by the way, you can go, you can take it to the next level, and this is going to be some really useful information for people out there. If you're in sales, or you're in, you're, you're a sales manager, or even a business owner, and you've got salespeople working for you, and you're looking for <coughs> um, how to generate a list of prospects, you can buy lists um, from, you know, Upwork or um, any of those kind of outsourcing uh, platforms online. Um, they will actually scrape LinkedIn and uh, other social media profiles for people that are in the industry that you want to target with the job roles you want to target. Um, so you can get really good lists uh, relatively cheaply. Mm. I know a guy um, who's buying 3000 um, no, 10000 for $3,000 <coughs> at a time. Okay. Uh, finance company. It's been doing really well. It's working for him. It has been for years. Um, you can get even a little bit more technical and, and, and cheeky if you want. You can download scrapers yourself and learn how to scrape online directories. You know, they're pretty easy to use. Send out a blast email using MailChimp. And, and hook up some appointments that way, that works really well as well. What about advertising? There's obvious, the obvious one is advertising. And, you know, I, I was talking to you, Wade, the other day. We were looking at some numbers and some figures. And um, when we stopped cold calling mm. and started and, and put the money that we were paying into wages. Oh, that was a massive change. <clears throat> yeah, into inbound marketing, which is what we sell. <laughs> so it wasn't Yeah, money hard, where our mouth is. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we did. We put our money where our mouth is and actually... Um, uh, put the money we were, we were spending on wages um, for cold callers yeah. in, into into um, advertising. That's something that... Um, and you guys were pr- kind of at a plateau for quite some time during that period. And as soon as you made that decision, <coughs> it was just 
Yeah. Only going up. Man, it, anyone anyone that um, is in business, running a business, would know this. There are so many X factors to how that can happen in a business. You've got um, managers leaving. You've got um, market things changing in the marketplace. You've got moving offices. You've got pandemics. Churn, you've got pandemics. You've got – there's just so much stuff. Mm. Um, that that can that can go wrong and that can go right in business, right? But um, definitely inbound marketing, man, is you know. And then, but even then, it, it's not the answer to all of your problems. You still need persuasive salespeople. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you know. There there are the um, there are the straight line sales. There are the people that ring up and just say, "Look, I want what you're selling. How much does it cost? Can you do me a deal? Here's my credit card." Yes, right. Like, how how quickly can we make this happen? Um, you know that that's the three percent. The, the, they are few and far between. Three percent yeah. is probably about right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you've got the other ninety-seven percent of people. You know, what have we got, Joe? We've got the um, the looky lose. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoa, we've got a few of those. Yeah, um, that hit your funny bone. Well, yeah, we got, got we got looky lose. Yeah, um, obviously closed one, closed lost. I mean, it's yep. the statuses of our of our inbound leads. Yeah, um, people looking for more information, uh, looking to set up a demo. Yep, um, and some people are getting just, a quote. And some people that are just in the wrong place. Right, yeah, like well, uh, educate people who are looking for education. <coughs> yeah, which you know is, is cool. Fine. It, yeah, yes. it's cool. Happy to have that chat. Um, but I, I put people in three buckets: mm. um, the education bucket, people mm. who don't know what they don't know, looking for more information. Mm. I don't feel this is an easy sale. Mm. Um, I'm happy to put the time in, mm. and but this is a, a much longer term prospect for me. Mm. Right, like the buyer's that the buyer's journey, the buyer's cycle there, mm. typically much much longer. And you mm. might find that you're talking to somebody for. Uh, you know, months, not weeks. Mm. Like I think the longest um, sales cycle I've seen is is nine months. Mm. I think from the time we're originally talking, and then the continuing that, that conversation. Mm. Um, so bucket number one: people who don't know what they don't know. Bucket mm -hmm. number two: people who are interested in our services, mm. um, but just looking for the right mm. the right agency to go with. Looking for that <clears throat> persuasive sales technique. Yes, right? they they want that conversation. Yes, and the difference differentiators why are you better than competitors what is you can do for me what else have you done for your clients mm. um and then yeah the the hot to what do you call them oh um hot to trot but uh but <laughs> i was, was going to say buyers in heat yeah yeah buyers in heat yeah. and buyers in power according to jordan belford right yes he, he's he's got a couple of different buckets for people and um you've got buyers in heat that that are not in a position of power they need it now you know what i mean and they yeah. just they just want they're just going to go with you as long as it's not exorbitant and they're, they're kind of already sold for whatever reason. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, which can be through your marketing as well, by the way. Um, changing changing your marketing can change the quality of the leads that you get and how easy the sales are. It, it can change how far along the buying process that person is. Before they ring. Absolutely. Right? Exactly. Um, and then you've got the buyers in power. So they're the buyers that um, um, are looking around yep. and, and not – and they're not going to make a decision until Sit they've decided. Which sitting on a ten thousand dollars stack, and they're calling five different agencies yes. or freelancers or whoever. Yeah, I'm just trying to find not the best deal, mm. but the best value add. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of comments that are made by prospects. You know, a lot of things that people say like, um, "That's too expensive." You know, I, I remember um, training the the call, call center on that. You know, anyone that says that's too expensive is saying it's. They're not saying I don't have the money. They're saying the the value is not good enough. Yeah. Right, that's you know, if someone someone tries to sell you a, um, a Toyota Corolla for one hundred and fifty thousand bucks, you say that's too expensive. You know what I mean? You might have a million in the bank. It's not because you don't have the money. It's because of the value that you feel like you're getting mm. in the proposition. Um, yeah, so so definitely, I think that. Um, where were we? We're Possibly. talking about the three buckets. Oh, that's right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, the three buckets, yes. Yeah, so, and there's also marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads. Mm, you love talking about these <clears throat> MQLs and SQLs. I do have one quick question for Joe. So, in terms of getting one of these longer term prospects who mm. are really just looking for information that then maybe you know you convert over the line further down the track, yep. because you've built this kind of rapport, do you yep. find they're more repeat customers or long term customers? Um, that's a good question. I think it can depend mm. because it's a relationship like for that customer then typically it's a relationship sale mm. right they built that relationship with me they found that confidence and depending on how you work as a business maybe you're selling to then provide and be the account manager and provide those services yourself mm. um maybe you're handing it off to a supplier or a third party and the way that we operate is with dedicated ad account managers and, and dedicated SEO professionals web designers um 
So I think it can vary ultimately. And it really comes down to the ongoing is, is the communication that you have with that customer uh, and the results that they get. Yeah, but you'd also get temper- temperament. Like if, so, if it's really hard to win someone, um, that, that would often mean that it's going to be really hard for anyone else to steal them off you. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, that's, you've got, you've got the, the people who are kind of um, way more sporadic and, and less conscientious. Um, and and we'll make decisions. Yeah, people who move bounce around agencies every month or three months. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So there's 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 different pools of business owners out there. Yeah, and um, potentially that, that person who bounces around. Yeah, you spoke to them nine months ago. Yeah, they went with another agency. You yeah. spoke to them six months ago. They went with another agency. Yeah, you spoke to them three months ago. They come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's definitely you know. You might be a business selling to businesses, but really at the end of the day, you're a person selling to people. Yeah. That's, that's really the, the key message. So you can build rapport and relationships with people over time, you know, definitely I think is something that um, pays yeah. off. Um, Pe- people by people is as true today as it was in, you know, Dale Carnegie's... 19 yeah, right. tickety-two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> cool. The truth always resonates through time. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, let's, let's try and get through this. So we've got prospecting, we've got the intro... Um, you know, four seconds to um, form someone's opinion of you. Um, <clears throat> that's something that can be done through tonality if you're in person through body language techniques, which we're going to cover. Uh, what do you think's poignant about the intro, Joe? Poignant? Poignant. Important? Yes. I decided to go with the word poignant <laughs> after uh, considering my options. Um, I think it's a few things. Like everything, there's a few nuances that go into it. Yeah, mm. tonality is massive. Mm. Um, but I think having suppressed energy behind mm. that is very important too mm. you know you want to be excited to talk to this person you want to rev up their excitement levels as well you can't go hi i'm joe yeah from australian internet advertising like the tone is there yeah. but the energy isn't right you need to you need to be um, yes. coming to the table with i'm excited to get on the call to you mm. and i'm excited to have this conversation mm. but i do respect your time so have you got this minute can we talk about this is now a good time what are we doing next mm. from there so I think, yeah, the, like you said, the first four seconds are crucial. Mm. Um, and I talk about this quite a lot, um, but give good meeting. Mm. And that happens from that, that very first, very first moment. Mm. Um, and, it, and it goes back to these things we're saying, you know, let me respect your time. Let me tell you what I'm about, but, but work out if it's, if it's the right thing for you. Mm. And then let's set up what the next steps are. Mm. So it's uh, it's yeah. Whether it's agenda setting or whatever you want to call it, give good meeting at mm. every at every stage. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The, the you know it really comes down to experience. I remember um, uh, having a guy coming in uh, and doing some sales training with us, John Cleese. Um, <coughs> is that that's right? I think it's John. Is John Cleese a, f- a famous guy? I'm pretty sure that's an actor. It's Monty yeah, Python. Cool. No, yeah. it's uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. But the first name was John. Very very um, good sales trainer, and he talked about something called the value gap, which was um. The example that he gave was when you go to a restaurant, right? What do you what are you being billed for? What are you paying for? And a lot of people would say, "Oh, the food, the the service, the wine, you know, whatever it might be." <clears throat> and um, his answer would be, "You know, oh, the food." And he said, "But that's the most expensive food you could ever buy. You could go and get a Scotch fillet from down the road from half the price, right?" Mm. Um, or if you say the service, he'd say, "So you go to a restaurant just to meet the the waiters and the waitresses, like what's maybe it, you know, um, why would you pay for that?" And, uh, you know, it all comes back around to the fact that you're paying for the experience. Mm. Yeah. So there's a value gap, right? The gap is that at the end of the experience, you get a bill for the food and the drinks, right? But that's not what you're paying for, right? So, so that was something that was interesting as well with, um, with that sales training and with, with the intro. When you're talking to people, the experience that they have with you is from the moment they pick up the phone or the moment they step into the office or the moment they see your website or the moment they see one of your ads, right? Like it, it goes to the first, absolute first interaction mm. that they have or encounter that they have with your business. Sets the tone for the, the rest of the That's right. conversation, right? Exactly. And yeah. people are willing, people are willing to pay more for a better experience. Like they might be billed hours or they might be billed for a product or a service. That's what it says on the invoice. Mm. But you can you can have a much more expensive bill going out to people if the whole experience has been has been uh, worth it, right? Um, so there's there's definitely the value gap there, and that starts with the moment they hear your voice or the moment they see your first ad. You have to get that right, I think. What about your product? Is it, does that does it involve the first time they see about your service or product? Because you're it's not from the beginning, it's all the way through. It's every single interaction that they have with you. 
you know. Um, going back to your Toyota Corolla example, right? If you yeah. got a, if you see two cars in the street, you've got a Toyota Corolla mm. or a V Dub Golf. No. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna say like a Audi R8 or something. <coughs> Sweet. Right. You know, really, R8. really gap that value. Value is subjective, right? <laughs> if you were into cars, mm. but you, and and you know you got the you got the money because who's got money for an R8? But um, if you got the yeah, if you cashed up and you're ready, then then the experience of driving an R8, you know, all the all the prestige that it brings you and the and the the joy of of a whatever V8 engine, I don't know. But you know, mm. all those other things that go into it. Yeah, ma- all you're doing is sitting in a car driving from point A to point B. Mm. The the basics of it are not are not different, right? Mm. We're in a Toyota Corolla, which is not a bad car, mm. not bagging on it. Love a Corolla, yes, or an R eight, right? Yes. But but everything else that it brings, the experience is what you're paying for. Yeah, man the the quality of the build, the look, the 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 smell, the uh, acceleration, yeah, the um, you know, but probably more importantly than any of that, the status, St- yeah, the right? parties the it gets, you, gets you into. Yeah, man, you rock up to you know your kids. Um, birthday party and all the other dads are there you know and they see you pull up in your own like you can't deny that's what people people care about that stuff you yeah know what I and mean? so you know you want to be the business that people can be proud to tell their mates that that they've signed up with or that they've bought from you know that's that's really something as well because <clears throat> on that as well that you know I've, I've, I've kind of i think i've talked about this in another podcast but marketing doesn't just isn't just to try to get people to pay more for stuff so that the businesses make more money. That's one part of marketing, right? Like it makes sense for marketing to promote certain products or services in a way that make them look more appealing and, and worth more, you know. Um, but <clears throat> marketing also enables the consumers to enjoy that product more as well, right? If I've got a bottle of water and it says antioxidant and it's going to do amazing things for you and I buy that and I spend more on it, <clears throat> I'm going to enjoy drinking that bottle of water more. And I wouldn't have been able to have that experience without the marketing. It's a psychological payoff. But expectations are raised and if they're not met, Mm. what happens? Yeah, so often, you know, cognitive dissonance and and the need for perceived status, we will meet that expectation internally, right? Like, obviously, if you buy an Audi R8 and it breaks down on the way to the party, that's a problem. We're in front of everyone. You still stood on the side of the road next to an Audi R8, though. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly. I could still have a better experience than sit next to you. Yeah. Beat up. That, that bottle Corolla. of water can have the same, exact same water in it as the Mount Franklin bottle, bottle that was a quarter of the price sitting next to it. But I'm not going to know. I'm just going to drink it and think it's, it's, oh, I feel so refreshed. Oh, the antioxidants, they're good. I can really feel the antioxidants make mm. me feel it. It's all, you know... Do you so, really think Gatorade so, is like what you know is the best it's sports sugar drink? And water, sugar man. and water. It's, it's actually salt. sugar, water, and salt. So yeah. yeah. Um, so you're basically what happens if you pull up in your R8 and everyone's driving a Ferrari? Yeah, that's right. That's marketing, man. That's what it's people. You've got it. It depends what what social circles you're in, but it never ends. There's no escape. There's no way out. You never you never reach a point of status where you go. This I am fulfilled. I'm, I am fulfilled. I'm at the top. Um, I've compared myself to the Joneses. Um, and, you know, there is no one in my league. You know, mm. like you're always just going to be comparing yourself to the next league, the next league. So marketing can be a placebo for, you know, expectation. Definitely. To- it is. And not only that, but you can, you can, um, <clears throat> it, it, it enables, like I want, if I've, if I've, if I've worked hard, right. Mm. And I've earned a, a large amount of money as a result of my hard work. But everything, if, if everything that was available for me to buy was the same, you know, like communism, <laughs> basically, right? How am I going to reward myself for that hard work with this larger amount of money that I've, that I've earned? You know what I mean? I want the Gatorade Plus. I want the water with the extra electrolytes. You know mm. what I mean? Like, and I'm so going to enjoy it more as a result because I think about the hard work I put into being able to afford the nicer things. So know? the additional value... Perceived or otherwise, mm. is is the gap in terms of the pricing that you can be putting towards something. Totally, that's okay. right, and the experience, right? Moving on to the next one, Joe. Getting Good back on topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Questions. <clears throat> the discovery session and and qualifying, obviously. Yes. What do you? What can you tell me about them, Joe? This is the entire gig, in my opinion. I mean, mm. everything else is getting you to this point, mm. and after this, you can talk about the sales, the sale, and the the. Um, negotiation everything else but yeah the questions is what it's all about um and if somebody comes to you and say can you do advertising mm. yeah 
course we can. Mm. But what are you advertising? What are you selling? Mm. What do you want to be selling? How many are you doing today? How many do you want to be doing? Mm. What do you want your business to grow to? What is it today? How many people you got on the road or in the van or whatever? How many vans could you buy to scale up to? Mm. Now, how many customers could you service? What's your overall market look like? Mm. What are your competitors doing? Like the questioning, effective questioning technique is everything. Mm. Definitely. Definitely, man. I think it I think it opens up like how are you going to know what the per, what solution to provide yeah. the prospect if you haven't asked them any questions you don't know anything about their situation I'm a one man band electrician and I've got you know I've worked in bigger bigger companies before and I just want to I just want it to say this size mm. I just want to see a few more um, jobs coming through the door each week mm. is a completely different pitch and product to somebody who's I've got 15 vans on the road. I've got a competitor who does 10 times the workload that I do. I really want to get to the point where I'm cannibalizing all of his market and doing all of his work. Mm. It's a completely different conversation. Yeah. So in terms of actually providing value, yes. it, they're, they're two different um, levels of value and they're two different conversations. Right. And, um, you know, th- there's definitely, um, on, the, on the flip side of that as well, um, the, the, their perception of your expertise is, is um, or how they perceive you generally is mm. crucial, right? Um, and the more questions you ask, the more targeted they are, the the more of an expert in your field that you come you come across as. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? You know, like if it, because what what's the first thing that happens if you go to a mechanic or you go to a doctor's office or you you know they ask you a lot of questions. Mm. They don't just imagine if you went to the doctor and he pulled out. You know, he said, "Hi, doc, I'm here," and he went, "Yep, no worries. Here's the script." Yeah. Go and take these drugs. That's your problem. You know, like it's. it's You're probably not going to take those drugs. <coughs> no, that's right. Like, I don't. What? Yeah. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> Might go sell these on the back yeah. market. Oh, Black. sorry. I thought it was about the hair loss problem you were obviously <laughs> um, encountering at this point in time. Um, no, the the you in asking targeted questions, you come across as an expert because you can ask the types of questions that they've never. Re- they're completely relevant. They're the types of questions they should have been asking all along. And, and you get them thinking, why have I not thought about this before in this way, right? And it gives them a chance to speak as well about their favourite thing, which is them. Yes. <laughs> right? They're always. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, that, that's, I, I think questions also. I remember actually, Joe, having a um, call centre, uh, about 15 people there. We had a meeting one morning and I just kept drilling questions. I kept saying, you guys need to ask more questions. Here, let's write down a list of 10 questions you're going to ask every prospect you speak to today. Questions, questions, questions. And we had a really good sales day. We, we closed a lot of deals that day. And I remember the impact that that had on the team from, from, from that moment. You know, um, I really do feel like you can um, listen your way into a sale, mm. right? And yeah, again, effective question technique, right? Yeah. And you can have an outline of questions, but the reality is you, you can't script that stuff. No. You can have an outline on a, on a board of 10 questions that you should be asking. Mm. But each of those questions then has, you know, one to 10 <coughs> Yeah. Uh, um, drill down yeah, questions. Yeah, split offs. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Um, so have you got any questions that you like asking, Joe, when yeah. you're speaking to prospects? Have Lots. you got any kind of that you run you run with? I've yeah, got one. I tend to – oh, you go. <coughs> no, no, you go. I was going to say I, I tend to look at um, past experience. Cool. Um, current situation. Yep. Um, future, like ideal. What, what are you doing today and where do you want to be in the future? Yep. Uh, and then – what does that look like? What do you yeah. need to do? How do we get there? How do we get there? Yeah, cool. Um, I've found that sometimes uh, um, I, I've even interrupted myself to ask them if this is all making sense to them. Mm. You know, that, that can really work to bring them back in because you're running a, you're running a fine line. You really want to give them as much information as, as possible um, about the products or services that they're, they're inquiring about so mm. that they, they can be empowered in their decision, right? But <clears throat> if you just do the spray and pray – it's not going to work. You're not building the rapport. You're not bringing them into the into the process, and they feel like they're being sold to, right? So, um, I, I, you know, const- you can you cannot really stop and ask them if they're if they're if they're understanding what you're saying, if it makes sense, if they've ever heard this before, or if it's something that they were thinking about previously, or you know, that's something that that you can't do too much. You get keeping them in, involved in the dialogue, right? Not the monologue. Um, as soon as you cross that line. You know, that internal dialogue will, will start again. Mm. Oh, here we go. You know, this guy's going on a bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all, we all have the value that we're trying to provide mm. needs to be conveyed, right? You need to mm. get that over to people. But, yeah, it can be a bit of a one-sided 
pitch, mm. right? And it's just it's just pitchy mm. and spiegly. And back to the tone, uh, the tonal um, inflection. Yes. The inflection. Yes. Of saying, um, does this <laughs> make does that make sense? Yeah. It again, it, it allows that person to to stop the internal monologue and just revisit the last five or ten seconds of yes. what you've just said, for them to go, oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I've heard what you've said. Yeah. I've now sort of I've actually actively processed it <coughs> because essentially you've asked me to. Totally. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but you can, yeah. It can even it can even be a bit of fun. Obviously, each situation is its own unique um, situation, but it can even be a bit of fun um, coming up with some sort of like a formula where you're like, okay. I will not make more than three statements without asking a question. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or if, if I make a claim, I make one statement to back it up and then I ask two questions. You know, like there's, you could come up with some sort of like a formula that probably wouldn't work because everyone's different. Yeah, well, good, everyone's more, different. more questions. Yeah, but what you then, can categorize everything. You know, but yeah, a two, but yeah. ask more questions than you speak. Yeah, a two to one, a two to one makes sort of sense. Yeah. Well, yep. it's the phrase you got two ears mm. to listen one with mouth. and one mouth to speak with. So, mm. Ask two questions for every one um, statement. statement or claim. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and there's also if you're feeling like people are becoming disengaged with the conversation, uh, you feel like you're kind of losing them. Then often it's because you're just waffling on and not asking enough questions, not inviting them into the conversation, being engaged, um, and you know, and not asking them enough questions about themselves. And open That's, questions as well. Yeah. Can you see how that would be good for your business? Mm. Yeah. Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll just keep talking then. Yeah. So, do you want it or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. How can you see that impacting your business? <clears throat> yeah. Totally. That's that's a much better way to much better way to frame it. Um, then there's also obviously the uh, the mirroring uh, technique that you can use to draw people into conversations where you just repeat the last three words that they said. That can work well, pulling people into conversations that way. Thank you, Stanislavski. Stanislavski uh, created modern acting. Mirroring is one of his techniques. Yeah, right. I believe. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. Um, so it can work well. It That's can work well? Draw more out. It can work well, Joe. <laughs> You're doing it to me, aren't you? Well, I was trying. I was looking for the opportunity, but you weren't really giving me anything. <clears throat> cool. So we've got the intro. We've got the questions, the qualifying. You know, you in, you're out. We can ask the right questions and get people in or out so you don't waste everyone's time. Uh, body language and speaking techniques. Let's run through these guys. What do you reckon? Body language. But well, body language is an interesting one, right? Because you've got multiple, uh, I'm trying to say, you could be on the phone, you could be in person, you could be bumping into somebody in the street trying to sell the latest. Mm. Hot dog. You could be Hot on, dog. You could be on Zoom. You could be on Zoom. Everyone's doing Zoom. Yeah, it's a whole new thing. Yeah, so you've got all these like different scenarios. Yeah. Um, but each of them, like without doubt, still require, especially if you're going into a sales call, Big smile, mm. sitting up straight, mm. and being like approachable, mm. right? Being ready to, uh, uh, ready to, re re uh, receptive. Mm. So yeah, keeping call. your body language open. Yes. Yeah. Keep, keeping your chest up. Yes. So your lungs can fill up and you can speak with volume. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot there's a lot in that with the body language, with keeping your shoulders back and your chest out. You're Absolutely. actually exposing the vulnerable your uh, your vulnerability. You're being vulnerable, which is a good thing. It's Absolutely. always a good thing to be vulnerable. Well, right? you want, yeah, vulnerable, um, open, receptive. Keep the doors open. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, there's an interesting fact I've learned and since observed about um, the difference between uh, interacting with men and women, um, which I, I, I still find fascinating. Men like to stand um, sort of on a 45-degree angle yeah. mm. and talk looking in generally the same direction. And women, and close, men like to be close and shoulder to shoulder. They kind of talk like, you know, to each other as if they're both – Looking at something, <laughs> uh, pondering, yeah, yeah, philosophizing. Yeah, yeah. mates just talking about totally. This thing. And yeah. and once you know this, you can't unsee it. You keep seeing it everywhere. Mm. Women like you to talk to them front on, but from further away. So so men like to be really close, shoulder to shoulder. Women prefer for you to be not too close, not invading their space, but to be um, directly in front of them. Um, and now that I've told you that, you will see it everywhere. I promise you. Um, so keeping keeping that in mind can help as well if you're in person, of course. Um, tonality, we, we know about this, but <clears throat> I guess this whole section is about what are you saying without saying it? Also, yeah. pace. Pace is very important. Yep. Totally. People get flustered and they just rifle off as much information as possible and yes. they don't breathe. Yes. Yeah. Again, if you're talking very, if you're talking very, very fast, then it sounds like you were like you're nervous and you, know, you just want to get this information out and it's yes. very difficult for you to 
yes. slow down because you're not confident in yourself. Well, there's pacing and leading too, right? Like, so not one uh, glove fits all hands. Shout. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, so what's pacing and leading? Pacing and leading is meeting them where they're at and then taking them for a ride. <laughs> a good ride. Uh, like, you know, it, I love it because it's, it's a technique that you can use with anyone, anywhere. If you encounter someone who's speaking slowly, you start by speaking slowly with them and then slowly speed up and pull them with you, right? Um, if, you speak, if you encounter someone that's speaking quickly, <coughs> speak quickly and then slow them down to your pace, right? So that can work really well with tonality. Um, it can also work really well with energy generally. Like if you're entering a boardroom or a, a meeting room or something like that and you find that you come in and everyone's very somber mm. and down, um, you want to bring the energy up, right? You want to get people excited about what it is that you're there to talk so about. So do you come in at a 10 or do you come no. in in the mood? If, the they're, if they're on a two, you come in on a two mm. on purpose. You, you, you tone it down, but then you slowly bring it up, right? Which is where you're leading them to where you want them to be. The frog in the pot. The frog in the pot, Ooh. right? Mm. What, what's the frog in the pot? Uh, well, if you put a frog in a pot of boiling water, it's going to jump straight out. You'll never get your frog's legs. But if you put it in cool water and slowly increase the heat, it's mm. going to cook itself alive. That's unbelievably cruel. <laughs> the things we do. The things we do as humans. Delicious right? foods. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of joking, but the, I, I think that the lobsters in the boiling water when they scream and it's kind of sad. Where yeah, we're not talking about animal rights here. We're talking no. about sales. This is true, Wade. Um, so staying on topic is also <laughs> another good one. Thank you for doing that, Wade. You're keeping welcome. Me, keeping, me on the, keeping me on the line, according to trying to. So body language and speaking techniques. Um, T- more, well, you talked about tone. Tone's huge, um, but tone comes naturally with the energy that you've decided to enter the engagement with as well. Okay. Right. So I, I really do feel like you know. Um, Every, every interaction between humans, um, you know, there's a transfer of energy. And, and this is so powerful if, if you know, if, when I'm in the zone and I'm talking to prospects or I'm talking to clients and I'm, or I'm talking to people in my personal life and I'm in the zone, I'm switched on, I'm confident, um, it really does make a difference to uh, the outcome of that interaction and how much persuasion I have. Um, you know, we all know those people that we see, we bump into on the street, we try not to spend any time with because we feel drained at the end of the interaction mm. Mm. they're often constantly telling you bad news or talking about <laughs> themselves and usually it's a it's mix both. of the two energy right? vampires energy vampires man they just suck it out you know and, and this is in that how to win friends and influence people book for some reason we like bad news on the on the tv right we, we're hooked on that but if imagine if it's, it's not happening to it's us it's not happening to us and we don't also have to um i was thinking about why that is for so long but we don't have to connect with that you can turn it off anytime you want. You yeah. can walk away. When someone's in your face and they're giving you bad news, you have to kind of enter into that emotion a little bit and mm. and empath- empathize. And you, people are like, I don't want your sadness, man. Well, I don't there's want the proximity. Your, your, your there's the energetic, energetic proximity. That's right. And you're automatically, because of resonance, going to be affected by that. Exactly. That's right. And that's why you see people all the time, you know, saying, oh, man, I've, I've had a really bad day. My dog died. And they won't say, oh, that's really sad, man. That sucks. I, I feel you. Yeah. Like they'll go, oh, but you're going to get another one? Uh, oh, it's pretty old, right? He lived, lived a while, had a, good, had a good run. Like Not allowing the person that, to be Because they don't want to feel it. Because yeah. they don't want to feel it. They're not allowing themselves to feel the emotion. They're, trying to, they're invalidating the other person's emotion. So back, back on track, when, when you're interacting with, with prospects, you're bringing energy into that interaction, right? And, and that so don't be the dead dog dude. Don't be the dead dog dude, man. Don't have bad news. Why but would you want to tell people bad news all the time? If the person that you're interacting with is the dead dog person, yeah. you can lead them yeah. to you know the grass over there where it's a bit greener by being with them in that emotion. Absolutely, that's what you do. You got to, you got to, you got to be, you got to be the sponge. You got to be the sponge, not the, not the mirror. You know what I mean? Like it, it that's really. What, what does that mean? Well, absorb it. You know what I mean? Take it on and absorb it and, 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 and be willing to be in it with them. I remember from a long time ago, somebody drew a diagram for me about empathy versus sympathy. Mm. Uh, and they were saying that sympathizing with somebody is, in the drawing of the diagram, can we, person, can we draw it? This person is in a pit. Yeah, can draw it. We're, we're in a visual medium here, this. so it'd be oh, nice. Oh, and yeah. then you can explain it to people for our podcast listeners without the visuals. So oh, wow, Joe, you've done that before. I know, that was gold. Look at that, look how easy this is. So they're in the pit. And if you're sympathising with them, 
you're going to jump in the pit with them. But if you're empathizing with them, you're standing on the edge of the mm, where's my pen? Edge of the pit, right? Not looking down, but giving them the opportunity to help themselves out. So you got your hands stretched out down into the pit, but you're not in it. Throw a mm. rope, son. Yeah. Help so, out. Totally. And and you know, EQ in sales is way more important than IQ. What's EQ for well, everyone emotional, out there? Emotional intelligence. Emotional quotient. Emotional quotient. Yeah. So um being aware of how the person you're speaking to is feeling and, and knowing what to do about it. How do you, how do you, what are some signifiers to Same pick thing up back. on? Tone. tone. Yeah, tone and body language, tone. man. Totally tone and bo- body language. Like you can, you know, we say so much more than we, than what comes out of our mouth with words. Yeah, it's a subtext. Mm. You know what and I mean? And it's all tone. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's, oh man, I've been doing this for so long and I've worked with so many companies or bought so many mm. products for my hair loss. Mm. And it's just not working, you know? That's right. The tone is, I mean, obviously the tone is... Tone is the bone. So give the, a dog I'll, a bone. I'll Fatality. Give, I'll give you an example, right? Tell me, tell me tell me, what you're hearing about how I feel if you were to pick up the phone and I go, hey, it's Billy from Australian Internet Advertising. You need a coffee. <laughs> right. Uh, or Has somebody died? Oh, I've made 100 phone calls today. You know <laughs> what I mean? And you're just another one. And I'm expecting you to hang up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've already decided this is not going to work. Compared to... Hey, this is Billy from Australian Internet Advertising. You sound confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's just me, man, generally. Yeah. Can you point me in the right direction? <laughs> Why don't yeah, you buy our stuff? stuff? Yeah. So you just what did I say in the second one by not saying it is, hey, I'm excited. Is this you? You answered the phone. Great. I want to talk to you. you it's know? also a question without having a question. Yeah. And you're asking that person to answer that question by saying, is, is me? Yeah. You know me? Yeah, man. Mm. Little old man. It's me. Yeah. Oh, so, oh uh, yeah. Oh, hey, man. Yeah, how you going? Oh, totally, man. You've got to say it as if it's someone they should know who, who it is. Yeah. That's so powerful, man. It, it, again, it's the t- it's pulling them in. Uh, it, ever since I started doing that, the re- yeah. response has been like literally, yeah. oh, hey, yeah, how you going? Yeah, because like, they're- <laughs> Virtually without You know without why? Fail. Because if someone <laughs> says something to you like this at the end, it's like you should now know what to say. You should- Right? It's your turn. It's your turn, right? You, and then you, the brain just sublim- just goes right, bypasses the, the, the conscious mind and just scrambles to find the answer. It bypasses you the know? what, who is, what is this? Yeah. What is, and Why just goes straight you? to the, it's a friendly, yeah. like so you'd be having with your friends, way, friendly if interaction. I up, if I ring you up, you've never heard of me before. Hey, it's Billy from Australian Internet Advertising. Right, you're thinking. You're not thinking. Oh, sales guy. You're thinking, Billy, Billy, Billy. Do I know him? Australian? This, how do I know these guys? You know, like, mm. why should I? Am I supposed to be expecting this call? Like, it's just so powerful. So, uh, back to the, um, you know, the body language and speaking technique. The energy you're bringing in, um, you know, is is crucial. Everything's crucial, but especially energy. Especially the energy, man. And you know, you can you can really you can you can take yourself into the zone deliberately. Um, with with practice, right? What are some techniques to get in the zone mm. if you're not feeling it? Well, if you ask um, Jordan Belford, you should sniff some boom. <laughs> What's boom? <laughs> it's it's a mental nasal spray. Yeah, it's a mental nasal thing. Is it available at local stores, chemists? Yeah, it's available in Joe's dr- desk drawer. D- drawer. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's classic Pavlovian conditioning, right? When you have yourself a good, if you're in sales position, you have a good sale. You you're good? in that mindset. You feel good. You did all the right things. So you smash a boom, right? You That's why mental. you're sniffing your chewing gum. <laughs> I've seen you do it. <laughs> like minty. No, That's know. his boom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Secrets um, are revealed. But then when you're, when you're you know, back in the room, it's been a couple of days since you've got a sale or whatever, you want to get back in that mindset because you've now conditioned your mind that when it has that hit of boom, <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Belfort. This is all Jordan Belfort, by the way. Yeah, blame, the it, blame it on the Belfort. Yeah. Then uh, it puts you back in the mindset. <clears throat> yeah, you get straight back straight in back that in. state, right? Yeah, and and talks about reinforcing it, right? So every yeah. time you, not every time, but intermittently, where you get a sale, yeah, straight in, money's through the door, hit the hit the mental. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, because yeah, I think if anyone's listening that's been a salesperson for any number of years will know that you've you've got, you've got good meetings and you've got bad meetings. You've had you've had you know you, sometimes we just implode, man. We for yeah, whatever things, reason we things have go bad. Wrong. What you're human? <clears throat> yeah, no. Totally. I know it's hard to believe, but um, yeah. So it's we all make mistakes. We all have bad days. Sometimes we're out of the zone. Sometimes we'd rather be anywhere else, but in that sales meeting. And life happens. Life happens, man. You know what I mean. So, so there, but there, there are techniques that can help you kind of, 
you know, <clears throat> drag yourself out of that. Mm. You know what I so mean? So the the boom, what's what's the other what's one other one? Just one other one. To get um, in the zone. I, I definitely have a number of memories of mine that I like to recall of good times that I've had that build me up. You know, so that's something that, you know, is okay. definitely definitely something that helps me with my confidence. If um if I if I find that I'm I'm feeling a bit down or I've had a bad day or I've I feel, you know, this is a big one is feeling not good enough. I think mm. everyone, ha- like not We've enough. We've all, yeah, everyone's you know experienced I mean? that. I, it's just generally, you know, you can name it a hundred different things, but it all comes from generally a fear of not feeling like I'm good enough. Mm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes. Mm-hmm. So so there's memories I can I can draw on that help a lot. Um, I would say for me, music. Yeah, cool. Put, yeah. On, put on that track. Put yep. on James Brown. Yeah, get man. up off that thing. Boom. Five minutes <laughs> yes. later... You can take on the world. Yeah, man, totally. We should definitely put that on the Google Home when we get out of here. We definitely will. <laughs> um, cool. Joe? I like Get On Up by Curtis Mayfield. Uh, let's we that. hear that you're generally around 3.30, 3.34. It's a tune, man. It's a good tune. Gets you up. Gets you going. Superfly. <clears throat> good storytelling? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, See how I went up at the end there? It just worked so well. <coughs> and we were in unison. Yeah. For me, this this comes down to you can you can have all the information from that customer mm. about where, where they are, what they want, mm. what they want, mm. mostly. Um, and you can say, yeah, we offer these services. Mm. Might get you there. <laughs> I hope. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I don't know. Uh. But... Um, Good storytelling comes down to being able to give examples, really good examples of why it would work, how it's worked in the past, and the experiences that people have have you know gone through and had. Mm. Um, when working with with us and you know with you, mm. that just remove those mental roadblocks. So mm. good storytelling is is crucial mm. to to getting people over the line and to just saying you know I I'm confident this would work because it has worked in the past. Totally. Yep, there's definitely um, times where I know that an example or two that I've given of businesses similar in similar industries uh, that have worked out really well um, has made a big difference to the sale. It's mm. helped push it across the line. Um, there's also, you know, with good storytelling, there's there's um, other persuasion techniques that you can you can intertwine into that, right? Like um, consensus. This is what kind of like everyone does. You know what I mean? It's this is not you're not a guinea pig. You're not something we're going to be testing this on. Yeah, most people that sign up with us, like this uh, this guy from this, um, you know, shoe business that signed up actually about six months ago now, um, end up increasing their budget because the campaign goes well. Once we've, you yeah. know, like... It th- goes back to trying to date a girl at the bar, right? You don't ask, talk about yourself, you talk about them. Yeah. Um, it's the, uh, you're in a group of group of people when you want to go and eat burritos. Mm. So you don't just <laughs> say, hey guys, let's go get some burritos or what are you, what, what yeah. are you doing? It's like, hey, I hear yeah. the people are talking about... Getting burritos. Getting burritos. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite one that i i uh i do that too I, I actually just say apparently everyone's going to like pizza hut you know what i mean i, I just start start off by saying that apparently and then it's amazing how powerful it is right joe apparently apparently it's already happening so auto suggestion auto suggestion yeah. and also if that's what everyone's doing then that's what i want to do too you know what i mean like so there's there's consensus yeah social consensus. proof what about um closing uh, I mean, uh, closing is a massive topic. Closing is its own 15 separate podcasts, right? Yeah. So totally. many closing techniques. Yeah. Also, closing should be happening, little micro conversion, lo- micro closes throughout the, the yes. sale. So if we could do this for you, you'd, you'd be keen, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, probably if you could do this for me. Yep. So, yeah, closing is, is a, a whole thing, a whole totally. other beast. Totally. So what are just a couple? Of, one of my favorites is um, the assumptive close. I think that that's yeah, definitely. It's it's presumptuous and a little bit rude, mm-hmm. you know, but it can work really well and just removes that roadblock where you know that it's like asking a girl out on a date, you know. So I'll pick you up at eight. Yeah, there's all, <laughs> there's all this. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, there's all this tension and this heaviness and this moment, this big moment. You know what I mean? Where you go. So does um, so that's you, what yeah. we do. And um, do you no want to go ahead? around the bush? Yeah. Do you want to go ahead? And then you're like, just and praying. then you know, yeah. if if you do get the negative answer. Mm then you can tap into the objection handling, but mm. there's no more, like, this is it. We're at yeah. the point. We're at the pinnacle. Let's find out. We're we going. Are we staying? What's totally, happening? man. Just asking the question, man. And it's something yeah. a lot of people don't do, I think. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, ask. Uh, just ask. Yeah, for the sale. So if you want to go ahead with us, it's going to cost you this. Man, you've got to have an ask. You've got to ask for the sale. Can I have your credit card information? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, totally. Um, I like to. Um, yeah, I like to. I like to do this where we we talk about timeframes. Mm. You know, so all of these things you want to achieve, and that I I'm confident we can do. So when do you want to achieve these things by? Yeah. Okay. And um, when are you going to be pulling the trigger on, on this service? And if it's, oh, yeah, you know, I'm definitely looking in the next week to go ahead with somebody. It's like, mm. cool. Well, it's going to take us a couple of days to get everything, you know, ready and put in place, dot the T's, cross the I's. So mm. you want to start that clock running now? Give us your details. Mm. Let's, let's go. Yeah, man. So there's the hard presumptive close, which is like, okay, so I'll just grab a few details. Um, have you got your credit card with you? Right? That's like, they haven't said yes yet. They just said, oh, that sounds interesting. And you're like, okay, so we're going to go ahead you know, that's the hard presumptive close or, you know, <clears throat> rather than saying, do you want it? You can say, do you want the red one or the blue one? Right. Or, um, okay, it'll be delivered in your house, you know, two weeks, give us your details, whatever it might be. They're the hard ones where you're assuming that they've decided to go with it. Mm. Um, the other one is a soft presumptive close where you just start talking about the process after the purchase. Yes. You know, that, that for me is my favorite. So if someone's kind of sounding interested, you know, I'll, I'll just jump to, okay, so look, um, if you decide to go ahead with this, what's going to happen is, right? Um, and then if by the end of that kind of process, uh, they say, that sounds good. I'll go, great. Okay, I'll just grab a few details, right? That's kind of my closer that I've been doing for a long time. It also um, opens up the next um, thing in our list here, which is mm. negotiation. Mm. So once you've got that far, mm. you can now start getting into, you know, if, if somebody's going to question you on price or whatever, mm. you can start getting into negotiation tactics. Mm. Definitely. Love negotiation. Mm. It's fun. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, when you start learning little negotiation tips and tricks and you use them, for me, I really get off on it. I just think it's, 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 at, the, it's at the crux of the, the deal making, the, the, the negotiation, the persuasion, the everything. You know, if you're not equipped and you enter a negotiation, you're going to lose. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're up against a hardcore negotiator, no chance. You know what I mean? But if you've got a couple of techniques, which can be picked up through reading or education, but mainly experience, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, there's so many things that people do to get a better deal through negotiation. And, and whether they're doing it deliberately, they've done it before, they've, they've been educated, or they're just naturally trying to get the best deal for themselves. You know, one of, the, one of the, my all-time favorites that I've had from hundreds of business owners over the years is, <clears throat> okay, so it's $1,000 a month. What if I pay for 12 months up front? And you go, okay, if you pay for the 12 months up front, we could do a discount maybe to, you know, like 20%, $10,000. They go, okay, yeah, I'll do the 12 months, but I'll pay monthly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the old bait and switch, yes, right? Yeah. Um, so the bait and switch is one to look out for. It happens a lot, um, you know, but, but, one of the other one of the other techniques that I learned over the years was um, the conditional the conditional close as well. So um, <clears throat> if someone says something like, "Can you do me a better deal?" I don't just go, oh, "I'll go and check with my manager," or "Look, let me have a think about that," or you know, um, I'll say something like, um, "If I could get you a better deal, would you sign up right now on this phone call?" You know what I mean? So you just you're just chucking in the conditions on you even trying to get them a better deal. Um, there's a lot of fun. It's not even going to come back. to the table and yeah. discuss a better price yeah. without you telling me you're going to go ahead. Yeah, and if they say, look, um, not today, I want to think about it, I say, okay, well, at the time when you're willing to sign yeah. up, at that time, I'm happy to negotiate the price with you. I quite like the negotiation as well. We can start talking about, okay, so with all of the things we've discussed here and all the things we're going to do, mm. what would you suggest? Mm. That's good. I like that. That's a good one. Also, what about... um. Uh, how 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 do, how do you want me to do that? How can I do that? How can we do that? You know that that's a good one. If someone says, "Oh, can you do the setup fee for half price?" You go, "Well, we're doing you know this and this and that included all in that setup fee." So how how do you suggest we could do that for half price? Have you got any ideas? Mm. <laughs> it's it's no without saying no. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like which actually I think for all of these things we're, we're talking about, mm. the amount of times I want to say no. Mm. Is, is massive but yeah trying to find a way to, to say no without saying no I think yep. is a really good way to keep the conversation going in the right direction why yeah. why do you want to say no without saying no um, I think no is just a it's a, a roadblock and something that people can't get past and mm. if you hear no it just shuts down whatever that question was it just shuts it down no whereas if you say I don't know um, 
Yeah, but it's a pricing, pricing question. If you say, no, I can't do that, mm. as opposed to, okay, well, with, you know, go back to... Let me to, see what we, I can do. All yeah. these other things we're going to do, all the value that I've told you about here, all the, the um, future projections that we'd love to see for your business, mm. you know. You really want them to be saying no. That's, that's what you're going for in a sale. You know, because that's so as a salesperson, don't say no. As the as the customer, you want to say no. You want to hear. You want to hear. You want to go for no. Mm. In in sales, uh, there's a, there's a technique called go for no, which is, um, you know, if if they there's straight line sales, um, but if they never said no, say say you get someone ringing up and saying, hey, I just want to get this. How much does it cost? You go, it's you know, thousand bucks. They go, here's the credit card, right? And you you do the deal. You never got a no. What if you'd said, hey, but why are you doing this? You probably you know what else could help is that as well, and that's only another thousand. And they go no no I don't want to do that. Then you know you've got you've at, you've given them as much value as you can, and you've got the highest sale value that you can out of that person because you've gone for no. Um, the other thing is that you know we've we've talked about this before, not on the podcast, but the um, <clears throat> the three different types of yeses you can get. Often the worst thing you can hear in from the prospect um, in a sales in a sales conversation is yes too many times. You've got um, different types of yeses. People will say yes just to get you off the phone. People will say yes to get you out of their boardroom. People will say yes just because they feel like they need to at the time but had never a- any intention. If you've orchestrated your, your questioning technique to be <laughs> the only answer possible is yes, mm. then that person is only ever saying yes. Mm. And there is an old school yes, yes, yes technique where you do lots of micro yeses through the, through the sales process mm. to get them to the big yes, the commitment mm. yes. But it's 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 bullshit. Mm. You don't want that. You want people to to be able to have the autonomy, the agency to say no. Mm. It can work well, you know, like throughout throughout, especially right at the start. I, I usually I found it, it worked well with the cold calling when I'd say, "Hey, is this Joe?" And they'd go, "Yeah." I go from Joe's Plumbing. They'd go, "Yeah." I go, "Is now a bad time?" You know what I mean? So I'd get them to to. I've been trying to track you down, man. It's you. You know what I mean? Like that helps, right? But. But definitely the old school 1950s, if they say yes enough times, they'll just say yes to the sale yeah. by the end of it is, is kind of over, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so go, going for no I think is, is actually a good thing. That's when the sale starts. That's when the negotiation starts. That's when your persuasion skills come in. Yeah, all of this has no. led up to the real objections that people are going to mm. start throwing out at this point. Because. Mm. They're, they're happy all the way along the process. You've, you know, you've you got into the, the intrinsic motivation of what they want. Mm. You've given your side of what you can do. Mm. Now it's time to handle objections. Mm. And, and often if you've been in the same role or you're a highly skilled salesperson and you've maybe been working in the same industry at least for a period of time, you'll know those, what objections to expect. Mm. You know, and it can, it can help a lot by handling them because people really feel like you get them. You know, if, you, if you know what they're going to be asking or what they're going to be objecting to and you you meet those objections and overcome them prior to them having the chance to even ask uh, you know present those objections that can that can make a big difference to the sales flow mm. I, I feel what's um, your favorite objection handling technique we listed a couple joe um i think for me uh i usually uh like to reaffirm like with them that i get that they're feeling that way you know what i mean and it makes total sense and a lot of other people have felt the same way as well uh, but the people that signed up with us anyway found that actually, you know, despite that being the case, it was um, far outweighed by the by the benefits of having signed up with us. You know, it's along those lines. Mm-hmm. That's a feel felt found technique. That's that's something that you'll find um, online. It's been around for a long time. It's my favorite because, you know, what happens if you if you have an objection and and someone says no no that shouldn't be an objection. Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? You, you feel. Uh, totally for me um, dismissed dismissed and that my and even worse than that and back to the human thing like my feelings are invalid Mm. you know what I mean and that's the worst thing to do to anyone because automatically there's walls on yeah you don't understand me you don't care to that's right my feelings don't matter to you you don't even see me as another human on the same level as you like Mm. your feelings matter to you but mine don't you know which is again why I like to not say no to people yeah um, but deflect essentially, which is my objection handling favorite. Yes. Um, is to deflect. So I'm looking around, mm. you know, I'm working, I'm calling five other agencies or whatever. Mm. Cool. I completely, pre- I completely understand. I would be doing the same thing. Mm. Um, there's a lot of good agencies out there do fantastic work. 
certainly, you know, I know from the work that we do that we get really good results and just carry on with the, you know, go yes. back to repitching essentially. Yeah, yeah, because you can't, you know, um, I, I guess the deflection works too with, with, with any objection. You can't be deflated by it, right? Like a lot of people kind of give up too early, I feel as well. If there's gold there, dig. Dig for it, man. You know what I mean? Go for it. Like if 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 just because of a couple of objections or a couple of no's, they're they're actually the most enjoyable sales to, to get across the line. You know, when you when you've got someone who's really nervous about, you know, had a bad experience or yeah. you know, thinking and umming and ahhing, speaking to their spouse, you know, and the 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 other business owner and really need to consider their options and then you get them across the line, that's satisfying. You 100%. know what I mean? For me. Every every time I look back at like twelve months of sales history, mm. The, the, the sales that were the easest mm. are the ones that I do not remember. Mm. That's right. Because they came in, they were like, yeah, this and is what I want, up. here's my credit card. Yeah. I, I don't remember them because yes. I haven't had that, that back and forth, I haven't had that interaction. Yes. Or that, that longer term. Build that relationship. Relationship, yeah. yeah there we exactly. go. That's right. But the ones where we've, we've, you know, for want of a better word, had a bit of a, had a, bit of a head-to-head mm. and overcome some objections and shown, shown the light, shown mm. the path. They're the, they're the best. Mm. They are the best. They do feel the best. Yeah, man. Totally. On, on both sides, I assume. Yeah, definitely. That's that's something that um, I feel like uh, the feel felt found and deflection are probably the most the most commonly used here anyway. And two of my favourites. You got tipping the bucket. Have you uh, ever tried that, Joe? Maybe. <laughs> tell me more. Give me. All you your tell objections. me. You tell me more. You tell me what you think it is, and I'll tell you what I think it is. Yeah, like <laughs> is, that, is that a technique? <laughs> you show me yours. I'll show you mine. Um, objection is that a technique, though. Uh, ob- T- tipping the bucket. bucket yeah. yeah. No, totally. what you just did. No, that was just Joe being weird. It's bullshit. <laughs> uh, no, just um, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Look. Um, again, it's it's your feelings are valid. In fact, they're so valid. I'm going to put aside what I was just talking about. And get you to talk more about that and anything else you want to bring up, right? Like that's so like becoming a therapist. I do this with a, what yeah. have I missed? What did you want to talk about that we haven't covered off here? Yeah. What is missing? Yeah, cool. So, but 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 it can also happen when, you know, they say um, something along the lines of, oh, how much does it cost? And you say, oh, it's $5,000. They go, geez, that's, that's way too expensive, right? So, you know, they might have, just qualified themselves out. You might decide based on your own gut feel and your intuition and your experience that it's now a waste of time for you to pursue this conversation anymore. However, if you do not feel that way and you feel like they've just they're they're running a big business, you know a little bit about them, you know they've definitely got the budget for that. If they can see the value, because back to it being too expensive does not mean they don't have the money, mm. right? It means that they just don't see the value in and it. And often when people don't have the money, genuinely, mm. if the value is there and it's strong enough, mm. they'll, they'll find, find a way. That's right. Yeah, human beings have a very um, crafty way of, um, you know, if if we want to, we find a way, and if we don't, we find a reason. I don't, I don't keep a lot of money on hand, right? I don't trust myself with it, so it all ends yeah. up in my partner's bank account or it's invested or whatever. It's it's out of my hands. Yes, but if my car breaks down tomorrow and I need to find two thousand dollars, yes, I will find that two thousand dollars. Yeah, man, totally. That's right. So so someone saying, oh, that sounds like way too much money doesn't always mean that, that that's now a dead a dead um, lead. You know what I mean? It's not unqualified lead. Um, so one way that you can handle that with tipping the bucket is, okay, so I understand that you're concerned about the price. Is there anything else that you know about the services that we're offering that you're also concerned about? Let's let's get everything off on the table right now. So let's you're, you're seeking the objection. Yeah. You go looking for them and you, and you over-validate. Yeah, totally. Oh, man, I can't tell you how many people have said that to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Half of them are clients of ours now, and really happy. <laughs> you know, like there's the you, you tipping the bucket's a great a great tool. Um, Why is it called tipping the bucket? <coughs> well, it's just they've got a they've got a they've got a bucket of reasons why they're not so going with it. So spilling the beans, spilling the beans, man. That's right. You know, um, there's you know often in that bucket also spilling is just, beans. Um, <laughs> often in that bucket also is just limiting beliefs. You know? Okay, so the bucket's filled with objections or mental roadblocks mental roadblocks right to getting over the line and they're not always practical and they're not always rational and they're often by and large emotional right like they're often yeah. they're often limiting beliefs can be things that they just don't trust um, um, people or businesses in general they they know they, they don't trust businesses specifically in your industry you might have a certain accent that they've been ripped off by before you know what I mean like it could be anything. Could, mm. There's so many reasons why people don't buy. You'll never know them all. And they won't tell you. <laughs> and it's not just because it could be too expensive. Perhaps right. you're too cheap. Right. Totally. That's right. 
yeah, back to the status thing, right? Like, man, I, you know, what you two hundred dollars a month? Like, what's wrong? What, what are you doing? How, do you, how are you making money there? Right. Not Where's, only, not where only where, that, where is the value there for you yeah. to actually do a good job? Not only that, but what are my friends going to think if I tell them that I signed up with you? Mm. It's two hundred bucks a month. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that's just just dodgy. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to sign up with some dodgy agency, you know, or business. Mm. So um, there's a lot in there, that, you know, to unpack. But generally speaking, people have limiting buying beliefs, and you can you can overcome them um, with a number of techniques. One of my favorites um, was. Um, we hold your hand every step of the way through this process, right? So, so um, that's actually a psychological kind of trigger for people because every single kid had their hel- hand held mm. while crossing the road, right? It's a, it's a symbol or a sign of safety and security. So if you can say something like, we, we hold your hand every step of the way through this process, that will often help alleviate some of those limiting buying beliefs um, because it, it triggers some, some sort of memory from when they were a kid. Uh, which is cool. Trixie. Yeah. I love that. Like mm. trickery, right? <laughs> yeah. Next next podcast, guys, is going to be how to hypnotize people into buying whether they want to or not. No, just kidding. That's All right, Jordan Belfort. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Um, I think we've pretty much covered most of the stuff we wanted to cover in the book, guys. How long is this? An hour and 20? Is this our longest podcast? Crafting an offer you can't refuse. What about it? Yeah, what? I just felt like saying that. Okay, it was good. Ah. Yeah. Well, we did a we did that on one. It. That yeah. was an hour, hour ten. I guess so. So, oh, hour, is that why you brought 20? that up? Because it was a longer one, or you just subconsciously? Yeah, let's say that. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> There's uh, a lot in crafting an offer. That's back to the marketing. That's like attracting leads and uh, you know sales qualified, marketing qualified leads. Offers are great. Um, you know, there's a lot in that podcast. I don't remember what episode number it was, but we'll probably retouch on that. That's a lot about what we're about here, you know, um, getting more value out of every dollar spent in online advertising. But in terms of getting more value as well, I'd like to ask if you have made it this far into the podcast, mm. let us know of all the things we've listed and gone through, mm. what resonated most with you, mm. but also what do we need to expand on? What do you want to hear from us in terms of what we're talking about? How should they let us know, Joe? Put a comment. Comment, email, comment, email Joe at Australian Internet Advertising dot com dot au with your questions, and he'll bring them into the next podcast. Please do. Joe always has spare time for his fans. J O E at. <laughs> you use my email inbox so much. <laughs> you send out, you send out mass emails to our email marketing database, yeah. and they all come from from me. Yes, but they come back to me. Yes, good. Just because they're shockers. Good. Man, why are we spending an hour and a half in here doing a podcast when you've got so many leads to call, Joe? I didn't because say they were leads. we're about giving back to the community. Yes. Oh, that's good. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. Nice. It's good. Noble cause. Uh-huh. Share knowledge. Knowledge yeah. is not to be kept knowledge under a rug. To be kept. It's to be shared yeah, and knowledge, enjoyed. Knowledge and wisdom is useless if not shared. So um. We'll come back to that. Yeah. We'll scratch ahead of no, All right. I reckon we good. sign off. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Lost Peace knowledge. out, guys. Have a good um, have a good end of the week. And if we don't speak to you, have a good Christmas. Ciao. Let's speak. <laughs>